Inshallah, I may speak something about it. I don't know its real meaning. I'm not claiming to be anything, to know anything, to be anyone. I can say something, inshallah, what our Shaykh had touched upon that subject and what he's going to send to me. It is always, uh, our Shaykh before the prayer is always going to say, straighten your lines. Now, we know the meaning now, meaning that there are some Imams that would recite the whole Hadith in Arabic. And then people are just going to straighten their lines without understanding what he's saying. And there are some that they are just saying in another language, straighten your lines and people know. Now, we straighten our lines and he's always saying, for example, shoulder to shoulder. Straighten your feet, but it's not feet to feet. This is important. Yes, yeah, straighten your feet, but it is not feet to feet in the way that people understand it. People are understanding now shoulder to shoulder. Tight is touching, it must. Because the energy that is going to be passed has to be passed now from each person to the next. Maybe you're coming with certain spiritual heaviness, it'll be taken away because there are blessings that is going to happen in Jamaat. The same way that when we're making a zikr, especially the silent zikr, your knees have to touch against each other. This is also sunnah when the Holy Prophet ﷺ made the first zikr and he's saying, Ya, ya Abu Bakr. And says, Come. And Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq stepped in front of him, sat down on his knees, and the knees were touching with the knees of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, and the zikr was then given to him, and the secrets was then passed to him. So, uh, these are subtle differences, uh, uh, subtle details that we're keeping, and it has that spiritual benefit. When you touch, it is not as the Wahhabis are saying, now you're going to, s like this, you're going to stand like this, and your feet is going to open so big like a camel's foot feet and then you're going to touch with your neighbor's feet because it is not uh, beautiful. Everything that the sunnah is giving, it is beautiful. You're looking very proud now. Who are you standing in front of? I'm seeing so many in the masjids. The way that they're standing up to pray, it is as if they're standing up in front of shaitan or in front of Nemrut or in front of Firaun. They have to stand up like this. which. They don't even, they will not even stand like that in front of the president. Forget about the president, in front of even the town council or their boss, they know how to stand like this. Hmm? In front of the president, they know how to stand like this. But in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're standing like this, opening like this. Now you open your leg big like that, you go into ruku, someone behind you and just boop, push you a little bit and you will fall. It is very... Uh, it doesn't make sense. There is no uh, stability there. You know, especially when you make the ruku, you have to make your feet to become a little bit smaller. When you make the sujud, now when you go down, you cannot have your feet to be big. It has to come. So, now, there is certain adab in the prayer that we're watching here and there, even the Ahli Sunnat or Ahli Tariqat, they completely <laughs> lost. In Islam, it is always from right to left. It is not left to right. So when we say, for example, straighten your lines, it is from the right side. It is not from the left side. Everyone is going to follow from the right side. When you come in, you're going to fill up the right part and then you go to the left. The person who is going to be behind the Imam is someone. There is going to be an appointment. There is going to be someone, because that person behind has to take over if the Imam falls down or he does so, he's not able to continue, that one must step up and the prayer must not be interrupted. The one who is the head of the line now, he has to be able to carry that post, that position spiritually. The people in the front rows, they are the front rows. You're learning all these things. We are learning all these things, especially only in tariqat, which, mashallah, no one really asks. 
because you know everything already. Those who are able to carry the full sunnah, they're going to step up front. Those who have more um, knowledge, or they have more seniority, or they have more tawadu, or they have more knowledge, they're going to be there. Uh, this one's in the back. So now, when you are physically small, just physically touching a little bit each other, and there is no uh, gaps in between you, especially your shoulders now, you are going to go down now together as a unit. You're going to go down together as a unit. You are not going to feel now that you are alone. Because everyone, either they're with Allah when they're alone, or they're with their ego and with shaitan. And when you're standing in prayer, and especially when you are together like that, your prayer becomes very easy. People who are not used to praying by themselves, for instance, they pray in a jamaat, it becomes very easy to go up and down. You can pray not only five rakats, you can pray a hundred rakats. In jamaat, it becomes very easy, which the holy days and nights are approaching, we may do. And so, inshallah, we keep this adab of the prayer. That time, you are uh, uh, dissolving your individuality. You're becoming part of the jamaat and you're following the imam. Don't say the imam is individual now, because the imam is following an imam that is in front of him. So that way, inshallah Rahman, although we are praying here in this world, our intention is we're not in this world when we're in that prayer. We are somewhere else. Then that time when you are together with your brothers, especially, and this is concerning a lot more to the brothers, certain things are given to the women, not to make it too difficult for them. Then that time, especially, you'll gain the blessings and the benefit of the Jamaat. This much is enough, inshallah. Fatiha. <laughs>